So I've had this machine up and running two weeks, maybe three, I'm not for sure. I'm not keeping that, that close track of it, really. It's not been long. Well, I've got an issue as far as the tooling for this machine. I've only got a couple tool holders I can use, and I've got to fix that. So let me show you what the problem is, and then we'll go about making it not a problem in the most complicated and time-consuming way possible. So this machine has a 40 taper spindle. Now, I like 40 taper spindle. It's a great compromise. 30 taper is a little small, 50 taper, it's pretty big stuff. I t my K&T mill takes that and the tooling takes up as much room as a lot of people's machines. It's a good compromise is what I'm saying. 40 taper. I like it. Problem that I have is that this machine takes Cat 40 holders. What I have on this table, despite only being able to use two of them, are BT40s. There's a difference, trust me. The difference is the Cat 40, 5 8, what, 5 8 11 thread, BT 40 takes, um, was 16 by 2, I think? I'm not for sure, maybe it's 18 by 2, I'll have to measure it out. We'll get into the details in a minute. Same taper, tooling will work in both, they just hook to the machine different. Cat 40, something you'd see on the older manual machine, BT40, something you'd see on a more modern CNC machine with a pull tab or pull stud on a carousel. Get it? Problem is I can't hook these up to the spindle because I don't have any way to fasten them in. So I can't use them until we fix my problem. So hopefully in this hour to probably take all day, if I'm going to be honest, or more, we're going to try to make it to where we can use both in this machine. So I just double checked. Cat 40 holder is 5 8 11, BT 40 is 16 by 2 mil. You can see there is a difference there in length. This one by eye looks bigger. It does. I think so. But it's not. I checked it. The taper, they are the same. Got a little snout here that's threaded on the Cat 40, and uh, actually the thread is a bit recessed in the BT 40. So the drawbar, this is the drawbar that come out of this machine. It's just not, it's not long enough to even start to engage the threads on the BT 40. Now what I could do, and would, what would be the quickest way around this issue, is just make an adapter that screws onto the end of this and adapts this thread, adds a little bit of length, which would be okay. We can do that um, to the 16 by 2 mil. And you know, that would get me by. Um, but chances are, I'm gonna be using BT40 far more than I'll be using Cat40, just simply because they're far more available. So what I wanna do is skip the adapter. Just skip that. I did that on my K&T mill. It works, but you know, it some, sometimes comes loose. It's a hassle a bit. What I want to do is just go ahead and accept the fact that I'm going to make a brand new bar, even though it is a little more work. Get that done, and I'll hang this on the back of the machine anytime I want to use a Cat 40 holder. I'll just grab the bar that's designed specifically for the Cat 40, or, yeah, Cat 40 holder. But if I'm using BT 40, I'll have a bar that's made for that as well. So excuse me why I insult your intelligence here, but I'm sure there's a few out there who don't machine and they don't necessarily know exactly what I'm doing. This drawbar goes through the spindle. The spindle of this machine is hollow. The drawbar engages with the back of the thread onto the holder. And as I tighten the drawbar up here, it pulls that holder and that taper into the matching taper in the spindle and keeps everything tight. So before we start machining anything, let's get a quick look at the original drawbar in this machine. It's made of two pieces, a threaded shank and then a top piece that's actually pinned on. And it's got a little bit of slop in the end here. Now, is that on purpose? I'm not for sure. Maybe they pinned it on because they didn't want to take a piece of stock this big and turn it down on the entire length of the shaft to save material. So they took a bigger piece and pinned it on. Maybe they did it for alignment reasons. This has got a nicely machined shoulder on it that seats at the, on the top of the spindle, and maybe they left that loose and pinned it on for self-aligning reasons. So it seats fully on the top of the spindle when it's tight and doesn't load the spindle all crazy. I'm not for sure. I wasn't there when they designed it. But that's what I'm thinking, that that is on purpose, that slop. So what I'm gonna do is just replicate exactly what they have here 
except for differently on this end. So that's the plan. Let's get a couple measurements. Right, we need to know what, what we need to make and then we'll get started making our drawbar. So I believe the easiest way to see how much longer our new drawbar needs to be is just to set these tool holders end to end and measure the difference in between the two. So 1.1 inch or 28 mil. So if we make our new drawbar at least 1.1 inch or 28 mil longer than the existing one, we know it'll work. We can always trim a little off if we make it too long, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because these are threaded pretty deep. So at least 1.1 inch longer than our existing one. So check that out. It's threaded. I'm shocked. I really am. I, was, I wasn't expecting that. I thought it was just a shank up in here and a socket with a pin through it. Wasn't expecting the threads. Why did they do that? They did it for pull resistance. That's why. Because a pin, if this was just slid up in a hole and pinned, all the shear would be on just this one pin. Now it's spread out through the threads of the bolt and the pin. It just makes it stronger, I guess. And the clearance, the, the shake that I was feeling that I thought was in their design, maybe it's just because it has clearance for the thread and it's not crucial to the design. I don't know, but I can replicate this. It's, this is better than what I was thinking. So there you go. That's, they could make it in two pieces this way and it just all works. All right. So there's our old draw bar. It's got a candy cane like spiral around it that I just noticed. Uh, and it doesn't feel round. It kind of feels odd. It's got a lot of little facets on it. And that makes me think that this went through a hammer and was forged into the round shape that it is. A 16 by 2 mil thread on one end and a 5 8 11 on the other. Measured it. And I'm right. It's all over the place as far as its diameter. For all intents and purposes, it's 16 mil or 5 8 Same thing, really. So what we're going to be making our new drawbar out of is a super nice piece of OD ground Thompson shaft that I happen to have. So in order to put threads on the end, because I don't have the change gears for my lathe, I haven't made that yet, I'm going to have to make a die holder. You know how projects go. Project turns into a project that turns into a project so you can finish the one you started. I don't have a die holder for these larger dies, so we'll go over the lathe first. We'll blast out the most crude die holder you have ever seen in your life to get a job done, and then cut our shaft length, thread the ends, and then make this end piece. I think that'd work. So here's what's potentially going to be our die holder. We're going to need to make a socket for that to go into. Hopefully this is some alloy steel. If it's cheese grade, mild steel, I'm going to try to find something else. But we'll see how it cuts. Yeah. It's something decent. You can tell by the way it makes a chip.
because this has got a hole in it that's off center, I chose to use a fairly beefy uh, center drill so it gets a better shot of getting that hole central through that stock. And then I'm going to start it super easy. But I'm going to be boring this hole anyway, so it really doesn't matter. It's the way I'd do it if it really made a difference. basically 38 mil. I'm going to do a little shoulder on the back so it can't slide all the way through. And uh, yeah, that's it. No specific shoulder thickness. I'm just going to stop before I get all the way through and put an end stop on my carriage so I can't move at a certain depth.
So I may have exaggerated about this being the crudest uh, die holder you've ever seen. I just, if I'm gonna make it, I wanna make it to where I can use it more than once and don't hide my head in shame when I do. 1032, I'm gonna do two 1032s, 180 degrees apart from each other. Drill bit number 20. And hopefully I can just drill through both sides at the, uh, you know, in the same, same thing. That drill bit has had it. It went through that material and when it broke through the edge, it slipped in the chuck and I think it broke a, broke a cut, broke a tooth off of it. No, I guess just the way it felt, I don't know. Okay, well that's not gonna work. That 
I'll have to test this with a file. This is this is hard. So I cannot use that Thompson shaft like I wanted to. That stuff is ridiculously hard. And I'll show you in a minute. We'll do a Rockwell test on it. <laughs> that stuff's grinder only. I was surprised. Sometimes you do a project, you think it's gonna be easy, and then every way you turn, it battles you. Well, that's been me up to this point. I did find another piece of shafting, 5 8 This is some sort of industrial shafting, stainless of some sort. I'm not sure what the alloy is. I did cut a thread on this end with that die, and uh, it was tough, extremely tough. I'm not sure if it's the die or just the material, probably a combination of both. But anyway, this is what we're gonna make our drawbar out of now, our new one, seeing as that Thompson shaft's not gonna work. So I've marked it out, inch, uh, about an inch, 200 thousandths longer than, uh, than our old shaft. So let's take this to the lathe, or to the saw, we'll cut it off, we'll go to the lathe, I'll show you me battling to get a thread in this. And then, uh, then we'll move on to this piece after we do our, after I show you the hardness tester in that uh, Thompson shaft. So I got my stock in the lathe here. I'm gonna thread up to, I got a little Sharpie line there that I'm gonna thread up to. First thing that I'm gonna do is come in and put a radius on the end to make the end of this just a little more finished, maybe give my thread a little uh, easier uh, place to start. Does that make sense? Also, because I battled the thread on the other end here, what I'm gonna do, because 13 threads per inch is really close to, to you know, two mil, I'm gonna come in and cut a just a couple passes of 13 threads per inch, then come back with a threading die and finish it up at two mil. They're so close, it'll just remove a little bit of material, maybe make my life a little easier uh, threading this with the die. That's the idea. I'm gonna turn the diameter down uh, about 10 thou, 15 thou as well, the OD. Just trying to make my life easy, that's all. <laughs> to make the change gear for this thing so I can cut metric threads on it. 
looks good though. So this makeshift die holder actually worked pretty well. That threaded rod's hard on the hands. I'll have to make some decent handles for it and some thumb screws to lock the lock the die in. So better than a pair of channel locks on a die. There's our new bar. That should, that should work. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna check it before I do go any farther. Just gonna put it together with this end, put it in the machine, make sure that it works. If it does, we'll move on to making this piece. So check out this old draw bar. That's where it threaded into the part with the nut on the end. So I went over to the cutter grinder and I cut off a chunk of that Thompson shaft and I'm going to use my Rockwell hardness tester here just to see how hard it actually is. Um, we're set up in the C scale right now and what this does, at the moment it's got a specifically shaped or ground diamond point here. This machine presses with a certain amount of weight depending on the scale that you're in, that diamond into the work and however much it penetrates the surface of the work, you know, it calculates that into a, into a hardness. So I don't use this thing a whole lot, and I know that there are corrections. I have a chart for round stock, like we're testing here. Let's see. So we'll load this, zero, release the weight, so it's pressing that diamond in, let it settle for a second, let it press as far as it's gonna, and I release the handle, and it's showing me that that's 64 Rockwell C on, at least on the outside. That's pretty hard. That's hard as high-speed steel that you use in, in the lathe. So impressively hard. No wonder that bandsaw wouldn't touch it. So let's check it on the end, on the end that I cut. Wait, let's look at the correction first. So what did I say, 64? Cylindrical work correction chart. So observed reading, it only gives per 10. So let's say 60, that is a 5 8 diameter. So it says add uh, 0.5. So basically 64, 65 Rockwell C, as far as I can tell, is what the outside of the shaft is. But I've read that it's case hardened. I should have looked into that before I even tried to cut it, but I didn't. So let's see how soft the inside is, or if it is softer, and it should be. Um, release the weight. Oh yeah, it's way softer than the, uh, than the outside. I can tell simply because how far the gauge dropped. Now to get my actual reading, I have to flip this lever. 20 Rockwell C. So 20 Rockwell C on the inside, uh, 64 or 65 Rockwell on the outside. So that explains why it wouldn't cut. This stuff's glass hard. So when I've got a part that's got more than two dimensions that require me to remember it, I'll normally do a quick little sketch. Ain't got to be pretty. It just needs the critical dimensions on it. That way I can take this to the lathe instead of taking this and this and relying on my memory, which is not always uh, reliable. So if I do a quick drawing and double check it, you know, usually I'm more successful. All right, so there's our stock. Not exactly for sure what it is. It's a decent turning alloy. So it's not it's not cheese grade, mild steel. And it's got a section on it that's already slightly above what we're going to need for our major OD. So here's the plan. I'm going to come in and face this first. We need a four inch long part with a major OD of 1.259 or 32 mil. 
basically. So we'll turn our major OD four inches long, a little longer than that. We'll come in, we will, well, first we'll face it, turn our major OD, drill, uh, thread. We'll make our shoulder, the step on the front. Then we will part it off, flip it, and then turn our section down for our thread. So it's really should be pretty straightforward, I think. I'm just going to go ahead and part this off. There's plenty of work here to hold on to. That way I don't have to be chucked up on that rusty stock. Stock. Put it in there. 
we're going to drill to depth, which we already got the drill marked, and then we will put our shoulder on it. Then we'll flip it, turn down the major diameter for our thread, and then take it to the mill. So I've got my tap in the tailstock. Tailstock is unlocked. I'm just going to feed it in by hand. This is the wrong profile tap. This one pushes the chips forward, so it's for a through hole. So I have to just get it started and then uh, you know finish it by hand. It's the only tap I have, 16 by 2. I don't have a large selection of metric taps. All right, so we got major OD on our part done. We've got it bored and threaded. Now it's time to work on the shoulder, the step down here. So on our drawing here, we can see that our major OD is 0.862 or 22 mil. So we need to make that uh, 22 mil. Our standoff to height or length, I guess it'd be more appropriate, is 13 mil or a half inch, basically 509 thou is what I've got on there. So here's the tooling plan. I've got three tools to accomplish this. First tool, just going to be get this shoulder to size and to rough uh, length. The tool I'm using is a DNMG uh, 432, and on the end of this insert, it has a 130 seconds radius. So if I just used that first tool to create this whole piece, I would end up with a 130 seconds radius in this corner. Would that hurt anything? Probably not, but I don't know. This one does not have a radius. It's sharp 90 degree. I don't know if it would interfere on the machine, so I'm just going to make it like this one because this one works. So to do away with the radius that I'll be left with after cutting the shoulder to size, I've got a parting blade here, heavily relieved, slightly offset in the holder so I don't have to rotate my tool post. I'll come in, I'll blast out what's left of that small radius, and then back out and create a nice sharp 90 degree shoulder to seat on. Then come in with our chamfer tool and blast off this corner just like it is factory. So that's the tool lineup and that is the order of operations and then once that's done we'll just flip it and the lathe will spin off the major portion uh, or to the major OD of this hex and then uh, go to the uh, milling machine and finish up the hex on the rotary table. So let's do it.
Ahura. Are you a good girl? So what I'm doing here is it's very, very simple. So all I've done is plop the rotary table onto the mill and bolt it down. It's not centered under the spindle or anything like that. I plopped it on, bolted it down, put my work in. That's all. So the plan here is to stop every 60 degrees and make a pass. 6 times 60 is 360, if you didn't know. So there's no reason for indexing plate on this one-off part. If I was doing multiples, I'd probably set up this. It would probably be a little faster in the long run, but seeing as this is a one-off, I can stop for a second and tweak in my zero here and move on. So here's the plan for cutting. I'm gonna make a cut, just a light cut on zero. Then I'll turn the rotary table 180 degrees and make another cut directly across from it. Then I will measure across those flats and then, you know, dial in whatever I need to dial in in order to get the proper distance across the flats that I'm looking for.
really nice. All right, so basically the last step, and, and let me run you through the plan real quick. So I uh, used my edge finder, found the edge, offset to center. I've got a center drill in here. I uh, moved down a bit, and I found a spot that looks pretty good to drill this. So we're going to center drill it. We are going to replace that center drill with a 1560 force drill, which is 230, 233 thousandths, I think slightly smaller than what we're going to ream this to. This is a little carbide bladed 0.249 reamer, so a thou under our final pin diameter that's going to hold this together, so it'll be a thou press fit. If everything goes as planned, it will be. Thou press fit on our pin, but because this shaft, it all has to be drilled together, that way it all lines up. But because this shaft has some play in the threads, I've kind of supported it out here, about half the amount of play that it's got. Personally, I, I, I don't care, uh, but I don't want to drill uh, and ream and pin this thing and then it find out that the shaft is held rigid to this end and it's cattywampus. That's a pretty good word, cattywampus. So once I've drilled it and I've reamed it, I'll pull this out. I'll oversize the hole that's in this just slightly where it's a nice, easy slip fit on this pin. That way the pin is not held rigid into this shaft, it's only held into the, the nutted part. Does that make sense? You'll see. I think it does. So let's finish this up. Nice slip fit.
sure that that's lined up. That's it. That's what I wanted. New draw bar. There's a BT forty. It does the thing. It's good. Now we can use all the rest of my holders. The majority of my holders. That's good. All right, so that's it this week. Draw bar turned out really nice. Um, I did ac actually make a draw bar out of that uh, hardened Thompson shaft. I just annealed both ends. I had to make an extra one because some of these holders, even though they're BT40 and shorter, there's a few of them that I have that have a 5 8 11 thread in them. So they're mix matched. But now I have a way to make or to hold any of my tool holders that I have in the spindle. So that's nice. So I guess that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.